if you had to pick like three top exercises for building finger strength over the long term or for maintaining it, what would those be? Like if we look at three, I think you can get a lot of, and there's different times I think to apply them for climbing that work well, work well for me anyway. So when, if you look at something like a 20 millimeter edge or something with that edge, I like to do hypertrophy, like in the, especially in the tendons and all that. So with that, I'll, like, if you do repeaters, you can do different, there's different protocols, uh, like seven, three or whatever, something like that's going to work and do multiple reps. So I like to do that. And like, so when we're looking at that preparation phase, so I'm going to do a lot of volume doing that type of thing. Or if we look at lifting from the floor, like a def deadlift type of e edge or something. So 18 millimeters or something. And then I'll, when I lift from the floor, I'll do that. I do reps because mm. it's e really easy to, uh, to structure and quantify the load. Uh, if you do it like that, just like we do with, uh, with power lifting, what, what annoys me a lot with, uh, dead hanging is, uh, calculating with time under tension. I never found a really good way to do it like that. You know, you can calculate your times and doing your set, but if you just do like reps, then you can calculate your load, just like power lift is, does you, you have your, like, this is my session load for today. So the number of reps at that weight, and then that's going to be really easy to quantify your, uh, yeah, the volume for me. I like, I like to have numbers like that to be able to track where I'm at. And that's only always been one of the issues in the, I've, I've faced that I've had issue with uh, from dead hanging that I picked up, I get from, from grip and like uh, power lifting is that, that, that method works really well for me. Yeah. yeah. So you so would, build... you would train that or program that the same way that like a power lifter would do a hypertrophy phase where maybe you're doing like, you know, sets of eight to 10 to 12 reps or something in that kind of preparation phase. Is, is that yeah. right? For fingers, I don't do a lot of like. I, I hypertrophy, like I'll do a lot more volume, like a little bit more volume. So one of the things too, that I had a lot of success with was a, a progressive warm up. So when I lift from the ground, even on the hangboard, I'll do something like similar to that. Well, I'll work my way down on the edges or progressively add weight, but uh, I'll, I'll work my way up. So say I'll start that 60% of or 50% of my max at a certain amount of reps, usually something like eight is going to be good when, if I have like a goal to work, to go to around 85 or percent of like, the, my main sets are. So I usually try not to go like crazy amount of reps just to kind of like get burnt out. And then I'll do my main set. So usually my main sets will do like four series or something like that. Again, it depends on the week and depends on the day. Some days I'll, I'll bring the volume a bit down and then some days I'll have like really high, uh, high volume. And then uh, every once in a while, I like to do kind of like a pyramid where I work my way up. So 50, 60, 70. Uh, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, and then sometimes I'll even bring it back down. So that I like to do like in uh, like right now, like when I'm getting close to the, the trip. So I do very little volume, but the intensity is really high. So I'm really close. Same thing when I'm doing like cl getting close to a grip comp. So I'll get closer to those big numbers, which helps with the, uh, yeah, yeah, just kind of like the, the coordination of all the fibers and all that. I find like mm -hmm. you get really efficient at lifting heavy weights and stuff you still have to train at heavy weights if you want to be able to lift like uh you know big uh, big stuff if you just do like smaller weight it doesn't really translate really well to uh if you want to try to do like one rep max and stuff like that for performance for climbing i really like um, uh, micro edges so small edge uh, i found that translate really well so when i'm getting same thing when i'm getting a bit closer to the trips uh, then I'll start to focus a lot on smaller, especially if I, my goal is to, you know, have uh, crimpy boulders. I'll do a lot of, uh, yeah, micro edges like on six fours and stuff like that. Oof. I found that I, I find that it associates a lot better to performance than uh, actually like I've, I've noticed what, if I train like on a 20 or 18 millimeter edge or something like that, if, if, even if I can do like big PRs or something like on that edge, if I go on my board and I try to do like hard boulders, it doesn't reflect that it doesn't like translate as well as if I do small edges. So if I found that is a lot more, uh, relates a little bit better in terms of performance. So micro, but again, it depends again on your, on your goal. So if you, if you want to build strength and stuff like that, it's also a bit more safer than I like an edge at that size is really good. Like a 20 millimeter edge is, is really nice. It's comfortable. You can do a lot of volume, you know, you won't get, uh, like kind of like splits and all that. That's another thing as well. So there's certain edge size that I don't, I don't like too much, like at around 10 millimeters, I find it gets close to that groove and it kind of pe pulls it apart and cre creates like a split. Mm -hmm. So probably a lot of people experience that. So there's certain edge, uh, 
I, I can't do a lot of volume. It's just like, it's not a very efficient for, uh, to get the volume that I need for training. Yeah. And then the other one is with the, uh, uh, contact strength type of exercise. So for that one too, I know like a lot of the same thing. I've been seeing a lot of research that's been coming up on that, like, uh, on uh, rate of force development. Uh, so I see a lot of people training that too. And I tried it. Uh, one thing is like, yes, it's good. I think it's good to get an objective measurement of your, of how fast you can react and stuff or your reaction speed or your, your, the, the, the speed of your contractions. But in, in, in climbing, there's a very close correlation to uh, jumping or coordination or being able to see something or perception. So being able, so you want to include something, a jump or uh, not just touching the edge and kind of like contracting your fingers. Mm. Not going to, I don't think for my experience, it doesn't translate very well because in climbing, especially when we need that coordination, it's going to come from a movement that's dynamic or a jump. So if you're doing a comp, a comp climbing and doing a lot of those coordination type movements. Uh, so you, you're going to benefit a lot more from doing uh, something from a jump. If you don't, if you don't have access to a wall with all those boulders, then you can do like campus board where you kind of like use those big rungs. I don't think the head size matters too much on those as well. It's more of like the speed of the contraction. So you can kind of like keep one hand on the bottom rung and just like jump and work on like catching it. So that mm. way it works with the jump, your timing, your coordination. So that's in my, from my experience as a really good, uh, carryover. And that's another one that I've noticed that when I get close to, uh, an event or a comp or something like that, if I do a lot of those exercise, I find I'm, I get really, you get really quick at reacting to holes. And when you touch them, you just, you just stick them every time. Mm -hmm.